Greetings guys, girls, non-binary pals, and welcome back to another video. Recently, I have noticed that a very popular theme uh, seems to be parenting and parents who are not very good at parenting. And so I thought that today I would carry on with that theme since it seems to be what you all want. Uh, and I thought that we would have a dive into the Reddit r slash insane parents. I have had a few people recommend this and I haven't really looked through this for a really long time. So I thought that it was time that we did that because you know, we all have some issues. <laughs> And sometimes it can be validating. Um, and then other times it can be validating for a very different reason. So yeah, let's have a let's have a look at some insane parents. But before we get into it, I would like to say a massive thank you to today's patron of the day, Harry. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for all of your support. And I hope that you enjoy this video. If anyone else would like to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash savvy cat or click the top link in the description. It starts at as little as one pound a month and I appreciate it greatly. So thank you. All right, let's dive in and have a look at some insane parents. <laughs> So we're starting off with someone who says, my dad is in Texas right now and is making me send photos of my room every day or he takes a hundred dollars from my account. Uh, followed by a text conversation. I'm taking a hundred from you because you didn't send me a picture of your room and I'm going to take another hundred dollars today if I don't get pictures. Dad, I just got home late and forgot because I had a busy day. My room is clean. You had all day to take pictures, send pics before you go to work or lose another hundred dollars. I'm not joking around. I didn't have all day. I got to work at 12 and didn't come back till 9.30 and I had cross country and had to figure out parking. My good Lord. That's, that is, yeah, that is insane. That's fucking, oh my God. What, what, what is wrong with people? They have to send you a photo of your room or you take a hundred dollars from them? I feel like this is backwards. Usually how this works is that like your kids get pocket money for doing chores, right? You clean the house and you get like $10 because you've done your chores. Like that's how pocket money typically works, like an allowance. But you're taking away money because they didn't clean their room or not even that they didn't clean their room, that they didn't send you a photo of their room. One, it's their bedroom. It literally doesn't concern you at all. If their room is a mess, why does it matter? You don't ever have to go into their room. So why does it matter? Two, that's their money. And it seems to me that they have a job, that they're working. And the fact that you're able to take $100 from them feels like, you know, they have enough money to be financially independent and you aren't letting them be financially independent. Like controlling your kid's money by holding it above their heads and having them do things just because you want them to and then taking it when they don't do it, it's their own room and their money. Holy shit. Don't do that. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Negative reinforcement is bad. Positive reinforcement is good. Like one day your kid's gonna move out and they're never gonna speak to you ever again. And that's just gonna be how it is because like, you know, it's their space, they can do with it what they want. And also it's their money. Don't take their money. Oh my God, what the fuck is wrong with you? Holy shit. When I was 15, my mom demanded access to my Facebook account to write this post about herself. Thank you mom for all you do for me. Blank and blank, you have and always will be the most important person to us. Today, I appreciate you now more than ever and we are so lucky to have you for a mom. You mean more to us than you'll ever know and you're all we will ever need by our side. We love you so much. Hold your head high because you are our hero. That's so strange. <laughs> So your mom demanded access to a, a Facebook page so she could write a post about how great she is from your perspective. That's wild. That's so wild. That's such an odd thing to do. That's so funny because that's like what your friends do when you're teenagers and you steal each other's phone. Like I remember doing that. And I remember like all my friends doing that, you know, you steal your friend's phone, you go on Facebook and you like tag yourself and be like, it's my best friend, I love them so much. And it would be just like a little lull moment. Or you'd like steal your sister's phone and you'd post on her Facebook wall being like, I'm gonna do 
Savannah's chores every day for the rest of the week. Like you, you do that sort of shit. But that's when you're a kid. This is a grown ass woman taking her kids' Facebook pages and writing a praise post for herself. That's don't even have words. What? What? Why? How does that make you feel good about yourself? Do you not feel like pathetic doing that? You just want the praise from other people, I guess. You're like, look, my daughter posts about how much she loves me. That means I'm great. People don't care. <laughs> people don't, people don't care. And it looks really weird. I feel like a lot of her friends wouldn't have believed that she posted it anyway. Like it's odd. It's a really weird thing to do. So I was breastfeeding my seven-year-old son, Ezra, and he stopped, looked at me to tell me his tight hurts right where his diaper rubs, and he has a big burn. I don't know where he got it from. I'll post a pic in the comments. What are some natural remedies I could do? We don't do doctors. Off the bat, I have a lot of questions and concerns. Um, and then someone commented, breastfeeding a seven-year-old is weird, I don't care. But him being in diapers, is he disabled? Or has anything that he needs a diaper? Sorry if this sounds rude to ask. And they said, it's fine and he is perfectly healthy and has no problems. He's my baby. My oldest is 14. I chose to breastfeed him till he wants to stop. He loves to suck. And I chose not to potty train him because I love the baby stage and I can't have more babies. So he is my baby. I have to choose to believe this isn't real because if this is real, Jail. I personally think breastfeeding a seven-year-old is strange, like really weird. But I mean, it's not harming anyone really. It potentially could cause like bullying and such at school. Um, but I know that all kids are different. Some people like to breastfeed longer. Some kids will like want to keep doing it for longer. Like that's up to you. I don't really care. I don't really judge, uh, whatever. As far as I'm aware, there's nothing like inherently bad or unhealthy about that. Um, however, not potty training your kid. I feel like the reason I can't believe this is because I, I feel like he would want to do that. Like that's something that he, I feel would have taught himself to do um, by this point, unless you're deliberately like preventing him from doing that. In which case that is extremely fucked up and abusive. Um, and this entire situation just feels very controlling, like not letting your kid grow. Like again, if you wanna breastfeed until they're older, if they wanna keep breastfeeding, whatever, I don't really care. However, if you're having it because of this mindset, it feels very much like you are forcing it to happen and that you are viewing your child as a baby when they're not a baby. And I'm concerned for the dynamic of like how you treat your 14 year old. Um, I'm sorry you can't have any more kids, but I feel like you shouldn't be neglecting your other kids because you wish they were babies. Like this is just terrible, terrible parenting. Again, I have to choose to believe it's not real because I'm very, very concerned. Um, but if it is real, like genuinely fucking jail time. Like, it sounds like you're neglecting your other kids and you're also just harming this one kid as well. I'm editing this and realized that I was so caught up and focused on this not letting your kid grow thing that I completely forgot about the fact she said no doctors. Um, in which case, yeah, absolutely neglect. Absolutely neglect. Fucking jail time. These poor kids. Please take your kids to the doctor. Is the reason you're not taking your kid to the doctor because they're gonna tell you you're fucking insane for treating him like a baby and continuing to not potty train him and breastfeed him and like neglecting your other kids in the process. Like, is that why? Or do you genuinely just like hate your kids and not want them to be healthy? Or is it both? Um, yeah, if you don't take your kids to the doctor, you shouldn't have kids. I'm sorry. Fuck me, holy shit. Also, <laughs> if, I keep, if you keep saying this fucking hair clip, I can't sit still, right? I haven't been on my meds for a while because doctors are xenophobic and won't give me my pills because I have a New Zealand diagnosis and they decided that wasn't good enough anymore. So I, I can't get my meds anymore. Um, and so usually I play with a hair tie. I don't have a hair tie. So I'm playing with a hair clip. So if you see it just like on my hand, in my fingers, or you hear like a sound at some point, I, I'm sorry. I'm just, I can't sit still. So 
Hi mom, so this is a bit of a TMI post and then monkey see emojis times three. My four-year-old daughter co-sleeps with me and my husband. She's usually a very deep sleeper, but last night this wasn't the case. So hubby and I were having some adult time and we are usually pretty quiet and discreet since we never want to wake the little one, nor has she ever. But this time, maybe we were a bit too enthusiastic, like extreme bed shaking type of enthusiasm. And my daughter wakes up and yells, stop it guys. And I was absolutely horrified. We told her that I was trying to get off the bed and I bumped my head into the headboard so it made a little bang and that we were sorry that we scared her. She took that explanation and went back to sleep and thankfully haven't mentioned it again today. Not looking for advice or anything. Someone please tell me I'm not alone and their kids have witnessed such acts and that we haven't scarred her for life, lol. I think it's time for this little girl to start sleeping elsewhere. Holy shit. Uh, do not have adult time while your child is in the same room as you. Not even that, but she's in the bed with you. I can't even, I can't, I can't even have sex if there's like, a pet in the room. Like if my fucking like, <laughs> like I don't have a dog or anything here anymore, but like, you know, back home with my dog is in the room. I'm letting him out of the room for a bit because I can't, I, <laughs> I can't fucking have your dog like staring at you. Even if he's asleep, even if there's just like a pet in the room, it makes it like, mm, uh, uh, your fucking child is in the bed with you. That's, that's straight up like I would class as like sexual harassment because she's not consenting to that. She's not consenting to being there. And it's different to when someone walks in on you because like you're in private, you're not anticipating anyone walking in on you. And that's like them invading your privacy. This is you just straight up doing something incredibly inappropriate. I don't understand how you could be turned on or have any desire to have sex with your partner with your child there. Go to a different room, go to the fucking lounge. You just said, I think it's time for her to start sleeping elsewhere, which implies you have another room in the house that you can go to. Don't, 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 don't ever. I don't understand how you can do it. And I don't understand why you would do it. That poor fucking child, holy shit. Please, please. Do that somewhere else and definitely have your child sleep somewhere else. What the fuck is wrong with you? So this is a text conversation between a parent and a child and the child had, was like wearing a purity ring, but then like had sex with their like long-term partner. And this was the parent's response. Hi, we are not trying to be ugly about the ring, but the meaning of it wasn't honored. I had the hope of walking you down the aisle and give you pure to your husband. That privilege was taken from us. Please understand. You can still walk me down the aisle. I have my own thoughts and opinions about tying a woman's worth to her purity, but I digress. Your views are your views and I'm sorry if I disappointed y'all. I'm sorry it ended that way. I'll send it over when I can. Love you. It's just so so fucking strange to say the words. I had the hope of walking you down the aisle and give you pure to your husband. That privilege was taken from us. Like you had the dream of like giving your daughter away while she was a virgin. Why do you, why are you thinking about that? Why is that a privilege to you? Why do you feel upset and betrayed by not having a virgin daughter? That's so gross. That's so weird. Parents stop obsessing over their children's sex life challenge. Like, can we please, can you please stop? It's really strange that people care so much what their kids do with their own bodies. Like, especially because this seems to be like a grown adult. Like she's saying, I will send the ring over to you. Like she lives not with them anymore. So like, really what? <laughs> Let adults do what they want to do, man. Like, why are you upset about it? Get over it. This is a text from someone's mother. Did you take my AirPods? You must have. Hello, answer now. I want them back now, thief. I did not. Why would I take yours? Yeah, sorry, I found them. So small and stupid. <laughs> this is just like, <laughs> I relate to this so much. Oh my God, story time. I, like many, have a good habit of like losing keys, right? And so does my mother. And one time I lent my mom my car. And I don't remember why she couldn't use her own car, but she couldn't, she took my car. And then I went to use my car 
the next day and the keys weren't hanging up. And I was like, hey, mom, where, where are the keys? And she's like, I didn't have them. You had them. And I'm like, y- <laughs> you took my car yesterday. Where are my keys? I need to go to work. And then she was upset with me because I was blaming her for losing my keys, even though it, she did. <laughs> And I was in the wrong because it's like, why is everything always my fault? Why do you accuse me? Why are you blaming me for losing your keys? And I'm like, literally because you used my car yesterday. Um, But then it turned into a thing and I had to take her car to work instead, which she wasn't very happy about. And then after a couple days of, you know, barely talking um, and her being like, well, you'll have to get new keys and $600 later, because that's how much it costs to get keys for my car, because it's like a keyless car. She found them in her jacket pocket. I went a week without my car. I had to find them in her jacket pocket after she definitely didn't lose them herself and $600 were spent on new keys. But you know, that's fine. (laughs) It was my fault, obviously. Anyway, uh, so that... (laughs) That's my fun little story time there. What would a suitable punishment for a 13 year old boy who brought a pack of cheap, horrible ramen noodles into your house from a friend's house and prepared it in the middle of the night? I work very hard to buy good healthy foods that he likes and still complains insistently that I am horrible for only buying healthy food. And this is about as bad as it gets. He knows how I feel about it. In addition, he spent the previous night at a friend's house and drank Coke Zero all night and Popeye's chicken. I knew he did that, but I feel the ramen is just laughing in my face. I found remnants of noodles in the sink and then dug through the trash to find this bag. I'm serious. I'm so mad and so hurt. I need ideas on how to educate him since clearly he knows everything at age 13. I hate sleepovers, but I also don't want to destroy his friendships, but they will be on hold for a while. My God, let kids eat food. Your kids should not have to hide food from you. Do you understand how awful that is? Like, just let your kids eat food. It's okay to eat processed food every now and then. It's okay to enjoy the things that you eat. Like, you're like, I buy him food that he likes, yet he constantly complains that I'm horrible. Maybe he doesn't like them that much. You know, maybe he's a 13 year old boy and he wants to like eat sweets every now and then. He wants to eat junk food every now and then. The fact he's not allowed it in his own home like feels very restrictive and that he's like left out. And the fact that you control him through his food to the point that when he eats junk food at like friends' houses, you like ban him from going to their house. That's just such an awful thing to do. Let your kid, it's not going to kill them. You can explain, you know, that you need to have like, a balanced diet or whatever. Like it's important to get whole foods in your diet. It's important to have protein. It's important to have carbs. It's important to have fats and sugars. Like it's all important. And then some foods are sometimes food, you know? Don't do black and white food, okay? Don't do that. If you have strict rules in place, they are going to be broken. That's how it works. If you say this food is good, this food is bad. You are setting them up to make bad choices. No food is bad. No food is bad. It is all just food. Some food you just should eat less often. But as soon as you say you can't eat this, they're gonna fucking eat it. And this works for yourself too. All it does is like come with guilt, you know? This, I'm coming from years of eating disorder therapy when I'm speaking about this. So I get really heated about this sort of shit. But you put strict rules on food, all it's gonna do is cause like an awful guilt cycle. And this is you guilting your child. You are being the voice of like eating disorder, I guess, in this sense of being like, how dare you eat that? How dare you eat that? You're just setting them up to have a really terrible relationship with food and also a really terrible relationship with you as well. I went to school with a lot of people whose parents wouldn't let them bring junk into the house. And all it meant was that (laughs) they ate all my food. I was at school. This is like a trauma thing for me in a sense of like, I didn't have a ton of friends, right? And I was taken advantage of a lot as a kid because I was one of the only people who didn't have parents who restricted the types of food that I ate. So I got crisps in my lunchbox. I got like my LCM bars. I had sugary things and stuff in my lunchbox and none of my friends did. And it meant 
that I would have to give my food away in order for them to be friends with me. If I didn't give them the like sugary snacks from my lunchbox, they wouldn't talk to me. It leads to unhealthy relationships. It leads to lying and manipulation and cheating both to you and to others. It, lead it leads to a lot of issues, yeah? Because you are prioritizing food over their relationships, over everything else. You are teaching them terrible, terrible things. What should the punishment be for your kid bringing ramen into your house? There should be absolutely no punishment at all. Your kid should be allowed to eat ramen sometimes. Also, I'm sorry, but like ramen is like culturally <laughs> like eaten a lot in a lot of places. Like it's, it's like kind of a cultural food. And like, I don't know, the fact that you're like, it's so terrible, it's so bad. It's just like, I really don't like the implications of that because it's like a staple in a lot of Asian countries. Just like literally packet ramen is like a staple in a lot of countries. And it feels kind of really off for you to be like, it's so bad. How dare you bring this into my house? It's so awful. It's got like wheat starch and oil in it. Like get over it. Get over it. And like, yes, maybe it has MSG in it. And I know that people are terrified of MSG, but it's not bad. MSG isn't actually like that bad. And you need to get over it. Calm the fuck down. Let your kids eat food. Let your kids enjoy things. They don't eat ramen every single day. That's fine. You, maybe you shouldn't eat ramen every single day. You should have diversity in your diet. And diversity also means having Popeye's chicken sometimes. It means having ramen sometimes. It means eating cheesecake sometimes. It means having chips and burgers sometimes. Like. That's what balance is. That's what a healthy diet consists of. It consists of a little bit of everything and it's not healthy to completely turn down entire like food groups and food types ever. Unless it's for like, you know, religious purposes or like moral reasons like vegan, vegetarian or like halal, uh, kosher, etc. And allergies, obviously. You should never cut out food groups. Teach your kids to have healthy relationships with food and healthy relationships with you. Don't be so controlling. Thank you. My son is 16, bedtime is nine. He has no phone and no internet access without a parent sitting in the room. Then it is limited to an hour max. There are parental passcodes on the TVs so he can only watch certain TV programs. We also homeschool and he is able to travel with his dad for a couple months at a time. He has been to almost every state in our country at least once. Okay, no. <laughs> your son is 16 and you're sending to bed at nine? That's first up, oh my God. That's, that's kind of ridiculous. No phone and no internet access? Are you trying to cut him off from the world? Like you're isolating him. You realize that completely isolating someone because what, he's homeschooled and he has no friends or anything? That's just abuse. Isolating people and not letting them, you know, see the rest of the world and interact with other people, that's, that's literally abuse. Isolating them and then restricting them and controlling everything about them, that's you being an abuser. And I promise you, again, all it's gonna do is mean one day he is never going to speak to you ever again. Once he figures out the world out there, once he leaves, you're being you're being cut off. Because why why would he wanna maintain a relationship with you after you've spent his entire life restricting him and controlling him and not letting him experience anything? Like he's gone to every state at least once. Okay, and that's not life experience. That's just like, he's done a little bit of traveling, but he hasn't learned any social skills. He hasn't learned anything about the world outside of where he is right now. Like we live in a time and an age where like internet access is actually really, really useful. Also having a phone is incredibly useful because you know, safety issues, having phones have really helped with safety. What if he gets into trouble somewhere? You know, what if he gets stuck somewhere? What if he's, what if he's somewhere and he needs an ambulance or there's a fire? He kind of needs a phone. You're like this controlling of him, yet you won't let him have a phone for safety reasons to contact you if there's an emergency. Or is he just like never not with you? Which is also a problem because he's 16 and deserves some independence. As much as some parents don't like to believe it, children are people. Teenagers are people. They deserve independence. They deserve 
like emotional freedom, the freedom to choice and decisions and to develop their own opinions. You can't keep them in this little bubble forever. It's not healthy for anyone. It's ruining your relationship with them. It's hindering their ability to create relationships with other people. It's just overall having a really terrible, terrible negative impact on their life. Stop it. Also like, you don't let your kid have a phone or internet access. He's gonna go out and like buy a phone without you knowing, or he's gonna fucking steal a phone without you knowing. I know this because I've known people whose parents are like this. I've known people whose parents have not given them phones or internet access at this age. And all they do is go and buy a phone and keep it hidden. I don't play with my kids. I talk to them, I feed them, I read to them, I cuddle them, I kiss them when they are sad, and I work to pay for their lives. They have friends to play with. I would rather die than play with them. It is boring beyond acceptability. That's so sad. That's like so, so sad. You don't wanna play with your kids? I cannot imagine not wanting to play with my kids. I don't have kids, but like, I love playing with kids. Their imaginations are so brilliant. And it is so much fun to stop and like, let yourself be a kid. Like I have gone through many phases of like wanting kids or not wanting kids or whatever. Like a, like a year ago, kids were something I'm like, mm, I don't think I ever want kids. And then, and then I, and then Bluey happened. <laughs> I've been watching Bluey because it's a good comfort show and seeing them like play, I'm like, oh my God, this looks like so much fun. I would love, I would love to be able to just like be a kid for a day and having kids and being able to like play with them and teach them like valuable lessons through playing and just like having fun and like learning boundaries and learning communication and learning about the world through just like, existing and having fun seems like the most brilliant thing. And like watching a child develop these skills and use their imaginations and be an individual and find themselves is like the most beautiful and amazing, amazing thing. And I can't believe that you wouldn't want any part of that. Play with your kids, man. That's so sad. Not wanting to play with them. It's bored. It's boring. What are you doing? What's your playing? You just like don't immerse yourself in it. You kind of just sit there, immerse yourself in it. Have fun, let yourself be a kid. Your entire life shouldn't be about work. You don't have to be like an adult all the time. Let yourself exist on their level. You are their equal. The best part of being a parent is like playing with your kids and spending time with them and getting to know them and like, helping them learn about the world. I can't believe you wouldn't want to do that. Why would you deny yourself of that? Let yourself have fun, man. This parent posted a photo of her kids on their first day back at school, first grade, fourth grade, and sixth grade. And uh, they, for some fucking reason, edited the body of their daughter who is in fourth grade. They like photoshopped it so that she has like an hourglass figure. Fourth grade is what, like nine? Nine years old? And you photoshopped her to have an hourglass figure? What the actual fuck is wrong with you? Holy shit, that is one of the most fucked up things I've seen. I have no words for that. I'm like actually speechless about that. Firstly, like that's, that's not the way nine-year-olds bodies ever look. Who are you doing that for? Why are you trying to make your daughter look more like attractive? Why are you making your daughter's body fit like male gaze when she is like nine years old? Why are you altering her body like that and making her have an adult body? Why are you, why are you photoshopping an adult body onto your nine-year-old? What the fuck is wrong with you? Firstly, you're encouraging her to have self-esteem issues. Secondly, you're promoting something fucking really fucked up and weird. You're, fo you're photoshopping her, mm, don't photoshop your kids, period, ever. But like, this is next level. What are you doing? What, what are you hoping to gain out of that? You thought that your daughter's body wasn't good enough because it wasn't an hourglass figure when she's nine? You hoping that she receives what, like compliments for looking like that? You want people to be like, wow, she looks so good because that's fucking gross. What is wrong with you? What the, what is wrong with you? Jail, jail, actually, what the fuck? 
Uh, this person is 15 and their parents stole their antidepressants because they slept through their alarm. And the text conversation says, we decided you are done taking your medication. It is making you tired and lazy. Don't think about arguing with me because we already hit it. Please don't do that. I will literally get sick if I don't take it. It's not safe to just stop taking it out of the blue. I did some research. You'll be fine. You have to leave at 7.30 tomorrow, be up. I will stop taking it, but please let me do it slowly. It is genuinely dangerous this way, please. Please don't argue with me, I am over it. Can you call me? Holy shit, yikes. Don't take your kid's medication, don't take anyone's medication without consulting a doctor first. And I'm sorry, but I think it is better for your kid to sleep through an alarm than it is for them to be like, I don't know, suicidal. Maybe. Maybe it's better for them to be late every now and then than to be suicidal. And if you are at home with them, why don't you wake them up if it's that much of an issue? Like I never set alarms. I like always trusted myself to wake up because I'm like an early riser. So on mornings when I didn't wake up naturally, my mom would come up to my room and like open my curtains and be like, it's awake time, get up and get ready for school. Like it's, it takes one second if your daughter sleeps through her alarm to wake up. And I know that that's like not your responsibility, but it's also your responsibility to be a good parent. And if that means they have to take medication in order to not be depressed, which means you have to wake them up, then that's something that you're gonna have to do. Like, I'm sorry, but one of these things is much better than the other. And also just don't do that because yeah, it is dangerous. Why are you willing to put her health in danger, not just mental health, but physical health in danger just because she slept through her alarm. Like I remember going off my antidepressants and doing it slowly like you're meant to. And it was horrible. I couldn't eat. Um, I relapsed and self-harmed for the first time in like two years. I couldn't get out of bed. I, I couldn't go to uni. I like missed a whole month of uni and like fell so behind. I was like throwing up all the time. I was like suicidal and it was horrible. It was like one of the lowest I've ever been. And that was gradually coming off my medication. I cannot imagine having my pills suddenly taken from me and how awful and horrible that experience would be mentally and also most likely physically. And you're just subjecting your daughter to that because she slept through her alarms. And I'm assuming if she's reacting to that in the way that it's going to make her feel, you're going to punish her and make her feel guilty because you don't think it's valid because it's like, you just stopped taking pills. You don't understand. They're pills that alter your brain chemistry and you've just taken them away from her. Fuck me, man. Some parents are so awful, so selfish and just think they know better than everyone. You don't know, you don't know better than your child. You don't know better than a fucking doctor. Let your kids have their say, listen to them and be willing to have conversations and come to like compromises and view them as human people. Your kids are your equals. You aren't there to have control and power over them. You are their equal. You're just older than them and you're helping them through life, but you are equals. I don't care how old they are. They're a person. They are their own person and they just view the world differently to you and they may be at a different stage in their life, but you are equals and you have to view them that way and treat them that way. Anyway, I've been here for quite some time now, I think. So I think that I'm going to leave this here. I have a bunch more posts saved though. Um, so if you want another one of these, if you want a part two, then please leave a like um, and comment. If I get like, 9,000 likes, I will do a part two to this. So leave a like and then I'll do a part two later. So yeah, cool. I hope that you enjoyed looking at some insane parents who probably should not have kids. Not probably, definitely should not have kids. And I am wishing all of the best to all of the children who have insane parents, um, bad parents, etc. So yeah, a massive thank you to my Sprout and Above patrons whose names are up on the screen right now. And a huge, huge thank you to my Kiwi Cat patrons. Harry, Toulouse, Bobby, Sparrow, Josh, Mandy, Robbie, Ikazel, Jessica, Eldo, 
Trini, Ida, Raven, Danielle, Enoli Light Cannoli, Elias, Evie, Jewel, Apollo, Taylor is Trying, Boston, and Chris. I love and appreciate you all so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. If you would like to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash Savvy Cat. I'll click the top link in the description. For as little as one pound a month, you get my videos a day early as well as podcasts a week early. And then for three pounds and up, you get things such as outtakes, bonus mini podcasts, live streams, vlogs, and more. So yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Don't forget to hit like, comment, subscribe, all of those good things. Follow me on Instagram, the Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, that Queer Kiwi. Sorry, X. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah. When you close your eyes.